What's going on folks, welcome back to a brand new video. In this one, we're gonna talk about Marathon Digital Holdings, ticker symbol M-A-R-A, -A, Mara's Q3 earnings, and we're gonna be looking and diving deep as to what really happened this quarter and the numbers. We're gonna talk about that, all the good, good stuff coming up with the updates that we've gotten from Mara, and we're gonna have some fun. Again, thank you for everyone who watched the uh, reaction video. It was my first time doing a reaction video. The uh, Mara is a fraud reaction video where I kind of broke down everything. Uh, someone was alleging that Mara was a fraud, made an hour long video breaking it down. It's really good and educational if you haven't seen it. It also teaches you how to do DD, how to take down and find the facts behind a company in case you're ever curious about something. So definitely check that out. Go like for this video is 25 likes. If we can get there, I'd appreciate it. So let's go, let's jump right into it. Marathon Digital Holdings Q3 earnings. All right, so here we are again, back to the Mara website. As we can see here, Q3 earnings, they had a 76% increase Q3 over Q2 and a 6,091 year over year increase to 51.7 million with non-diluted gap income and operations of 43.5 million or 43 cents per diluted share, which is very good. Um, they self-mined 1,252 Bitcoin in Q3, which is double what they did in Q2, which is really cool. Q2 was about 650, something like that. So they doubled that. And they have, uh, as of September, uh, that's as of September 30th, 2021. And they've produced, they've produced 2,098 as in all of 2021. So I mean, September, they had that, then October and so far in November. So, so far we're close to about by now, we should be 2,100 Bitcoins. Uh, Marathon has invested. We know the, the, uh, the kind of the, Bitcoin that they have in NYDIG, and that's worth 58.8 million. The Bitcoin that their kind of multiplier for this is 43,000 was the number that they used. We'll get there in a second. Um, their non-GAAP income of operations was 43.5 million or 43 cents per diluted share. Non-GAAP net income was 85.4 million or 85 cents per diluted share. Uh, their cash holdings are a uh, 32.9 million and a total liquidity of cash and Bitcoin holdings of 315 million dollars and as of october they obtained a hundred million dollar line of credit we also know that they've raised 650 million dollars of debt via a senior note at a one percent rate which is fantastic and this is going to help them buy bitcoin miners and expand their operations even more so that's gonna be really really good for them a non-gap income we know that that's the metric of their this is talking about the bitcoin that they purchased we know that uh total miners in q3 were 2.7 x a hash we don't know we got the updated press release from them for their numbers and as of the end of october they are at a 2.96 x a hash rate which i want to show you right now as of october i'm just jumping back to that and i think we did a video on that but i'm not sure but here 2.96 x a hash rate with 27 20 280 miners just running which is fantastic um, we know this number, which we got the updated numbers already, which we discussed. Um, Q3s, they purchased 30,000 additional S19J miners to get them to 13.3 exahash by mid-2022. Um, they brought on to their board of directors, uh, Sarita James and Saeed Usal in August of 2021, um, began onboarding Bitcoin miners, including DMG to the Mara pool. Mara's Bitcoin mining pool provides them with um, the industry leading transparency through services such as NYDIG. October, they added Sam Doctor for chief strategy officer at Bitouda at the, of the company's advisory board. Uh, they began chartering planes from Malaysia, I believe it is, to Texas now for all their Bitcoin miners to be installed there at the Compute North facility. And in November, they appointed Adam Svick for the VP of strategy to help grow the company through business strategies, strategic partnerships, M&A, and other means. So that means mergers and acquisitions. So that's going to be really good. We've got $650 million of, on the books. That's not counting the $32 million that we have now. So they can actually go out and buy a Bitcoin miner if they wanted to. Um, statement from Mr. Fred Till, CEO, again, just going through, essentially talking about everything that they hold their Bitcoin, what they did, the numbers they did. Um, the CFO statement is, is one that I like to talk about and look at uh, in details. With their increased hash rate, Bitcoin's price appreciating, we grew 76% quarter over quarter from 23.9 million in the second quarter of 2021 to 51.7 million in Q. Three of 2021, essentially, the growth coupled with the uh, efficient operations allowed us to generate non-gap income of 43 percent We know that already. Uh, we know this statement already. They tell us how much cash they have. Essentially, it's a repeat of what was said above. Nothing new. Um, usually, they he throws in some cool new stuff from time to time. But I want to kind of jump into it. So I took these numbers. Um, so assets, we know that they've got about $550 million in assets. That includes cash, Bitcoin. Other receivables, which is none, a deposit that ha they have, investment fund money, all that. Um, there are other assets that they have here. So total 664, a liabilities of $3 million, which includes accounts payable for the Bitcoin miners that they're owing and warrants, So, which is really nothing. Their asset to debt ratio is fantastic. 
um, their stockholder equity, all that stuff. So this revenue thing I pulled into it already, uh, pulled into our into an Excel sheet. Um, yes, okay, so we can jump directly into the Excel sheet. There, I do wanna show you one thing here. Um, they are projecting that their Bitcoin mining cost will now come down to $6,235 per Bitcoin, which is good. So here's our Excel sheet, you guys know. Uh, you guys are familiar with this one. So I have our hash rate for the beginning for Q1 here, hash rate at the end of, uh, for Q3. This is, uh, I have to update this one. Um, so this would be actually 1031. Uh, actually, excuse me, no, 9, 931. Um, and then we have our hash rate for the mid of the year. So I just put June. And that'll be a 4.5% increase from where we are now. So 4.5, we're set to grow 4.5 times for Marathon as of right now. Their cost for mining Bitcoin, what I did was I took the amount of Bitcoin mined divided by the cost of revenue, and we got the 8,200 8, essentially. At the average price of Bitcoin that they did, they gave us this number on the press release. That's an 81% margin. Very good. Um, revenue per day, revenue per quarter, revenue per year. Number of Bitcoin mined per day is almost at 14. I got their net numbers here. How much they're netting per year is it should be on track to do 178 million. Um, that's if they don't grow, but we know that they're going to be growing into the end of the year, so we should be closer to 200 million net, which means um, it's very good. <laughs> In my opinion, it's very good. We know their NIDIG value, the value of their NIDIG coins based off this is about 210 million, 211, 210.4. Um, their market cap right now is about 5.4 4 billion with this float of 100 million, which they give us their updated float. Stock price is 54, and our price to sales ratio is 105, 105x. So if we kind of zoom in and take a look here, I'm just going to go in deep. We know that the revenue is 51.7 million. Cost of revenue here is 10.26 um, higher. Why? Because we're mining more. Keep that in mind. Everything. Why is our cost going up? We're mining more. Compensation related really taxes. Compensation package went up. Remember, we we're paying the remainder of the America Komodo package and everyone else's package that was meant to go over three years. We've discussed this in many, many videos now. There was a compensation package that was supposed to go from January 1st, 2021 to January to the end of 2023, where if they hit certain market caps, 500 million, 750 million, 1 billion, uh, 2 billion, and I believe 3 billion or something like that. And that those are all added up. And this is it. This is the lion's share of it there. Within the 10Q, it stated that this is essentially done now and they don't expect too many compensation packages moving forward. That's there. Consulting fees were up a little bit. Again, not a big deal whatsoever. Marginal increase. Professional fees were uh, actually came down, which is very good. A uh, general administrative fees went up because they have more people now on staff. That's a completely fine. It's literally not that big of a deal. Impairment of uh, impairment of mined Bitcoin uh, cryptocurrency is six point seven million. It's down from the eleven million that was there. Their total operating expenses, which is the sum of all of these numbers here, came out to one hundred fifteen point nine billion. Uh, 115.9 million, excuse me, around 116 million. And then operating gain slash loss is we're operating at a loss because of this compensation package. So that's if you take these two numbers and you add them. So you're essentially taking 51 million, subtracting from the expenses, revenue minus expense, and you get your net. Essentially here it's negative 64 million. Uh, I will come back to that in a second and I will tell you how um, what to expect moving forward. So don't worry about that one bit. So other income is zero, no other income this quarter. Fair change in NIDIG value, we're now no longer negative. We're back in the positive now because Bitcoin prices are above the 34,000 average that, uh, uh, 31,000, excuse me, average that Bitcoin was purchased at and put into NIDIG. So that's very good, that helps. Uh, gain, realize gain and loss of digital sale of currency is $8,000. How that works, I don't know, it's just $8,000, absolutely nothing. nothing. Uh, fair change in warrant liability, um, it's only 100,000, 168,000 fair change because that's due to the price fluctuations of the stock. Um, other interest, they made $84,000 in interest, interest and expense, $287. That's probably tax related. Uh, total other expenses. So you sum up all of these and you get 42 million that's more expenses, uh, total in income, uh, um, excuse me, total income loss before income taxes. You add these two. And you're operating at a net income of negative 22 million, uh, which brings you to a uh, loss per share of 22 cents. Because if you take this and you divide it by this, you, uh, the float, that's how you get this number right here, the loss or gain per share. Now, if we were to remove the compensation plan and we assume the compensation plan didn't exist, wipe it out, the company would be operating at a 74 cent plus, right? They'd be operating at a plus. We'd be at a net income of 75 million, which is even above the net um, quarter value that I was that I had here. So I calculated the net value that you're doing per quarter. It's much higher, but it's there. So now let's assume that Marathon is able to reduce this and bring it down much lower to let's say just 25 million, right? 
we would be operating at 50 cents. So even if there's compensation packages, which they will be, it's no longer expected to be that big. Let's say we just do a compensation package that's about the size of where we were in Q1. We still wouldn't be that bad. But again, I do not expect this to be there. Um, I don't expect it to be this big ever again, just based off of what they told us in the filing. And I'm going to show you the filing right now. Um, so if you come here, you can you can see all filings for Marathon under this, under that presser. They have it all linked here for us. So if we go to the PDF, we do control F compensation. Compensation. There you go. This is the compensation package described again for those of you who don't know it. Um, it's here. It's been covered completely. Um, and here we go. And we are expecting, should not be expecting much more compensation. Here we go. Company anticipates only a $600,000 a $200,000 and a $2,000 one on December 20, uh, December 31st, 2021, we expect $600,000. On March 31st, we expect a $200,000. And on June 30th, we expect a $2,000. So again, nothing too big uh, in terms of non-cash compensation, non-cash based compensation moving forward. Um, this is just explaining their non-GAAP, um, which we calc it's calculated without co the compensation plan there. So we're going to keep going. Uh, stock compensation, we can see here, this is more for their non-GAAP calculations down here. I'm just I'm going to show you folks that there, there's nothing else here that we should be expecting. Um, these expenses, so again, just explain that non-GAAP is without that, and we are almost there. Here we go, compensation expenses and taxes. It's, talk, it's just acknowledging the compensation expense plan. And that is it, 29 of 29. So all right, nothing too wild. So let's discuss it completely. All right, folks, that was the Q3 earnings for Marathon Digital Holdings. Very, very exciting numbers. Again, I know the compensation plan was a little bit scary to see there, 94, 97 million, whatever it was, was wild. But as you saw, I proved to you that the compensation plan numbers should be gone now. I don't know if this video is coming out before or after my interview with uh, Charlie Schumacher, uh, the director of communications for Marathon. So I will definitely be asking him about that. So if you see that before or after this, whenever, you'll have the answer to and more confirmation on that. So yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. I appreciate you all. I'm beyond bullish on the future of Marathon, uh, beyond bullish. I'm not worried about the SEC investigation at all. It's an informational subpoena, nothing too wild. We've discussed this in other videos in de depth. Um, I did a whole over hour long video talking about all the allegations that were against Marathon um, from a YouTuber. And then the SEC stuff I also discussed as well, which he was alleging and were able to be easily disproven within an hour. So within an hour of live research, I was able to disprove all of it. So I think the SEC will be in the same boat. And remember, the worst thing that could happen if anything is even wrong is just a fee that's charged to Marathon. And we just pay the fee. Right? We, I mean, Marathon pays the fee. And it's called a day. So, folks, thank you so much for watching this video. I appreciate you. The like goal count for this video was 25 likes. Let's see if we can get there. Subscribe if you haven't and hit the bell button to be notified of new videos as they come out. Some videos are time sensitive, so you want to make sure to hit that bell button. If you have any questions, you can hit me up in the comment section below or follow me on Twitter at Ryan Rosbiani. Link down below. Also, all the links for anything that you would need Weeble, Twitter, Patreon, everything is at RyanStocks.com. You can click on the tiles. The Patreon is open for the month of November. Click on the tile, join us. It's a fantastic educational team of people that are there to help you learn, trade, print some tendies, and have fun trading with people that are like-minded, very small supportive community. So folks, again, thank you so much for watching. Remember, buy the fear of sell the FOMO. I did increase my marathon position by 50% last week, and I'm very excited to see where the future of marathon is. So again, thank you so much. Bye-bye.